Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and in this mini Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a C sharp script that will allow you to play a sound when an object collides with, well, anything in your scene. So don't forget to click subscribe, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to my channel, and with that in mind, let's get to work. So there's a couple of things that we need to set in place before we can actually do any of this. I have a barrel kind of floating in midair here, which has a collider attached to it and a rigid body. And if we were to press play, not a lot would happen. It would just kind of fall to the ground. Nothing amazing there, really. You would expect a sound to play if this were real life. Now, the rigid body we have on here is what controls the gravity as such. And obviously the box collider is what we can sense for colliding. So it stops things going through each other. We know how box colliders work. The other thing we'll need is this metal hit uh, little sound clip and obviously because the barrel is metal that's why I have a metal sound if you we were having wood or anything else obviously the sound would be relative to that object. So I'm going to show you the basics of how we can actually get a sound to play when it impacts with something. So we're going to be using relative velocity here. Uh, so let's actually attach this sound bite to our scene as well. Ready? So in the camera, let's right click and create empty and I'm going to drag and drop this metal hit over here, uh, untick play on away and I'm going to reduce the volume and the pitch because I think the pitch is quite high for this and I want it to be a deeper kind of sound for when this barrel hits the ground. So we're going to do this in a C sharp script like I've said. So right click create C sharp script, impact sound. Obviously, you would probably have different types of script. And as I said, this is going to be the simplest way of doing it. And you can obviously go forward with this. You can build around the basics of this and really get to work with it. So let's get rid of void start and void update. We don't need them. Uh, we do need to declare one variable, and that will be the audio sound that we've just put in. Public audio source. We'll have impact sound semicolon and this is going to be done via void on collision enter and if we press return now we'll get this private void on collision enter with collision collision inside the parentheses here we can get rid of private because it doesn't necessarily need to be private and in this method what we need to do is we need to have a statement which says if the relative velocity is greater than whatever we set then play the sound and it's as simple as that so if in brackets collision dot relative velocity and you can see it auto filled for us dot magnitude is greater than let's say one for now close bracket open curly bracket, then we would play that sound. So impact sound dot play, open close bracket, semicolon, and save. So what is this doing exactly? Well, this is checking just, you could think of it as just how far from the ground our barrel is falling. And if it's falling at a velocity of greater than one, which it will be, considering the height it's at right now, then it will make that impact sound. But I'll show you just how this works once we've tested this out. So what do we do here? Well, we attach that script to our barrel. Drag and drop. Click on the barrel, and then we just need to set that variable into there. And let's press play. There we go. So if we were to set this is 10 and save that's expecting the velocity to be much higher in other words if it was falling from a greater height so if we press play now we won't really hear anything so if you have the problem where you have this kind of thing going on it's more than likely the distance here so if i bring this down to let's say um one again save it head back into Unity, and if I bring the barrel closer to the ground, once it's compiled, there we go. So if I bring it to about there and press play, we still hear it. 
However, if I bring it to just above the ground and press play, we won't hear it. Or we will. That's fooled me, hasn't it? So this is technically based on its velocity. So if I put this as 0.5 F and save, obviously that being the float, and try once again, it will do it. So remember here, if we put this as, let's say, 3 and save and head back to Unity, at this short height, this sound will not play no matter what now because, there we go, Unity, you thought about that. It will not play because it's just not got enough velocity in its downforce. So if I bring it up a little bit further and press play, it still doesn't do it. So when I did it earlier, and it did it when I said it wouldn't do, one was a bad example, whereas three is a pretty good example. So if I press play now, there we go. You can see how that's reacting. Again, if I bring it down towards the ground, even bring it up just a little bit, and press play, it will make it. But if we bring it down, like I said, one more time, let's test this out. It shouldn't make a sound here. Oh, it does. Have I changed that again? No, it's three. So, about there. So it can be quite sensitive in some sex. So there we go, there we go. It's fallen there and not made a sound. Unity likes making a liar of me. So you just need to be mindful. The whole point of this little past minute or two was just to be mindful about this value here. If we were to set this as one more, 10. It's certainly not going to play from probably anywhere around here. Hopefully when Unity thinks. But with a bit of luck, if we have it sky high, obviously the velocity would be higher and we should be able to hear the sound there. So that is how you can use a nice little C sharp script to create a sound when an object impacts with another. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just as plain as this you can like I say you can really advance this script and take it to new places and really build upon it but this is the basics so if you want more advanced than this I would absolutely recommend just playing around with the script trying different things out different if statements different logic gates or you know that kind of thing and just build upon it and see what you come up with guys I hope that's helped and thank you very much for watching